Welcome to Profit Farming with Mary Ikegu. Today, I will show you the main tomato varieties grown in Kenya and how to differentiate them when buying seeds. I am excited about this because this is the first step to making more money in your uh, tomato agribusiness. Now, when farming tomatoes as a business, the amount of money you make at the end of the season depends on the variety you select among other agronomic aspects. When choosing the variety to grow for business, you must consider these three things. Number one, the place you want to plant. That is, will you grow these tomatoes in the greenhouse or are you going to grow them in the open field? If you're going to grow them in the open field, then you're going to be looking for tomato varieties that are labeled open field tomatoes. If you're going to grow them for the greenhouse, then you will look for tomato varieties for greenhouses, okay? Number two, you differentiate the tomatoes based on the genetical formation. In this case, we have the hybrid varieties, which are popularly known as F1s. And then we have the open pollinated varieties, often shortened as OPV. And by the way, do not confuse open field tomato with open pollinated varieties. Open field means it is growing in the open field. Open pollinated varieties means that it is naturally pollinated by bees, wind, or through human interactions just outside in the field, okay? The third thing to consider is the nature of growth or how tomatoes are going to be behaving. In this case, we have the determinate varieties, indeterminate varieties, and semi-determinate tomato varieties. Majority of these grown for businesses are F1 varieties or the hybrids, as you shall see in the next chapter of this video. Now, have you subscribed to the channel yet? Kindly subscribe because it's free. Again, YouTube will always notify you whenever I post a new video about everything you need to know concerning agribusiness to make sure that your investment in your farm multiplies in profit. You shouldn't lose money in farming if you are watching my videos, so subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Now let's look at the difference between hybrid and open pollinated varieties so that you can have a better idea on which variety to go for in the agrovet near you when choosing your seeds for tomato agribusiness. Now, both hybrid and open pollinated varieties are good, but when you want to venture into tomato agribusiness, the hybrids are the best because they produce a higher quality than the open pollinated varieties. Seed propagators take the best features from one type of tomato and combine it with another type of tomato with another great characteristic to make one variety with both features making the final seed the best of all tomato varieties available in the market. For example, tomato A is known for its sweetness while tomato B is known for its biggest sized fruits. Now. The seed propagator will take pollen from tomato A and B to get tomato C, which has both features in one, sweet and big size. The disadvantage of this variety is that you cannot plant them more than once. To get the best yield, you must always buy new seeds every planting season. When buying the seeds, Keep in mind that hybrids are more expensive than the open pollinated varieties. The main advantage of the open pollinated varieties is that they can grow in most locations around the country since they have a natural adaptation to different environments. You can also keep the seeds of the open pollinated varieties of tomatoes so that you can grow them in another season. The disadvantage of this is that you have to make sure that the place you keep them is not going to contaminate them and reduce their viability for production. So if you can be able to meet these requirements, then you can go ahead and keep the seeds for the next season. Now that you understand the difference between the hybrids and the open pollinated varieties, let's differentiate between the determinate, indeterminate, and semi-determinate tomato varieties and see which ones are available at the agrovet near you. If you want to grow tomatoes in the open field, then determinate tomato varieties should be your first priority since they have been made to adapt to the harsh weather outside a greenhouse. Alright? Now, 
Determinate tomato varieties are the types of tomatoes that can grow to a specific height of about four to six feet long and then they stop growing any taller. This makes them look shorter than all the other tomato varieties. Now, the denominate tomato varieties produce numerous branches that are, and that is why they are also sometimes called bush tomatoes. Although staking is ideal for the maximum production, you can still grow the determinate tomato varieties without staking. However, if you want to make the most money from your tomatoes, I recommend that you stake the tomato tomatoes regardless of their ability to produce independently because you will reduce the occurrence of diseases and you will have more fruits if you stake. Sometimes you might calculate the cost of staking and find that it is more than the expected yields. Like the amount of money you're going to use while you stake is going to be more than the money that you're going to make when you harvest the fruits. In this case, you can forego the staking. The cost now will depend on the materials you use for staking, the size of land, and whether you're going to pay for staking labor. Now, the determinate tomato varieties require minimal pruning since they stop growing at 4 to 6 feet tall. But, you must prune the lower leaves to minimize and prevent diseases from spending when the leaves come into contact with water and soil. Now, when pruning, remove suckers up to the first cluster of flowers. Determinate tomato varieties mature faster and earlier than the indeterminate and semi-determinate varieties. You will find that when you are growing the determinate tomatoes, every plant that you have planted is going to fruit at the same time. All right, And since they have fruited at the same time, then it means they are going to ripen at the same time. Now, this is good for you as an agribusiness farmer, especially when you have a buyer who wants to buy your tomatoes in bulk. Supposing you start a processing plant and start making tomato paste because you're that farmer, you know, then this is the best variety to grow. Agribusiness farmers consider growing determinate tomato varieties because you will be able to make large sums of money at a go in a short period of time that is approximately 75 days. Although some determinate varieties can go up to 80 days but that's not a long time right? Just 3 months. I know you're wondering the exact varieties that you can buy from the agrovet or seedling propagator near you. I got you. This table shows some of the determinate tomato varieties to consider for agribusiness. Most of them are available in any agrovet across the country. I shall do a detailed analysis on each varieties in my next video to see how they are performing on the farms Yaniqua ground based on the experiences of the farmers I have interviewed. Look out for that video because it will help you make the best choice based on where you are, you are and where you want to grow these tomatoes from. Now let's dive in and look at the indeterminate varieties and how you can go about them. Now the indeterminate varieties are the best for greenhouse. We said that the determinate are best for outside or the open field, but these ones are best for greenhouses, okay? Now that you understand that, indeterminate tomato varieties have no specific height limit. They keep growing and producing fruits throughout the plant's life as long as they have conducive environment to do so. They are also called climbing, vine, or pole tomatoes. They can keep growing and growing as long as they have the sufficient nutrient, water, and a conducive environment. That is, you have put fertilizers, there are no diseases, you have controlled the pest, they can keep growing and growing and growing. Great for business farmers who want to buy seeds once and enjoy a longer harvesting period. For example, 
If you have a relatively smaller market, for example, the households in your neighborhood, and they keep coming back and forth for your few tomatoes now and then, then this is the best variety for them. This is because the indeterminate varieties will give you small but very frequent harvests as the plant reaches maturity. Your tomato vines will always have flowers, immature fruits, and ripe and ripe fruits at the same time. Remember in the in the, in the determinate varieties they are going to fruit at the same time and therefore they will ripen at the same time in this one the fruits are going to keep popping up the flowers you have flowers you have fruits you have unripe ones you have ripe ones so in this case you are always harvesting however these varieties produce small sized fruits compared to the determinate varieties Supposing you want to grow this on a large scale, you just need to plant as many seedlings as possible depending on the market requirements. Pruning is a major requirement for the indeterminate varieties because it will force the mother plants to focus the energy on fruit production instead of leaves growth. Therefore, you must prune excess leaves to give the tomato a conducive environment to flourish through proper air and nutrient uptake. Failure to prune indeterminate tomatoes, it is going to get low yields, small sized fruits, and sooner or later you're going to lose your market. Because you do not want this, make sure you regularly prune your indeterminate tomatoes. Indeterminate tomato varieties can go up to 10 and 12 feet long or even higher. This vine's rampart development requires adequate staking to give them enough support. Select strong staking structures that are at least 6 feet tall. This table shows some of the indeterminate tomato varieties that you can grow in Kenya and you can pause the video for you to take a better look on them. Our last option for today all variety is the semi-determinate variety and these ones are the ones that grow taller than the determinate varieties but they remain shorter than the indeterminate varieties. They don't grow too long and they don't grow too short. They are in between. So this type is also produces more bushes than the other two and they keep growing the, like the indeterminate but not as vigorously like the indeterminate variety. Pruning and staking are optional. However, removing lower leaves keeps the diseases at bay. Now, some of the semi-determinate tomato varieties in Kenya include Star 9068 F1, Big Rock F1, Star 9065, Captain F1, and more that we shall look in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's meet in the comment section as we continue with the discussion about tomato varieties. In the next video, we shall dig deeper on these specific varieties, the one that I have shown you on the tables. We shall dig deeper and we shall look at the, their production capacity. How much can you get from which variety? The benefits to you as an entrepreneur in terms of which one has the highest capacity to bring your money back and with a higher profit margin based on what the market that you're looking for requires. So look out for that video. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the comment section. Let's continue with the discussion.